वेलकम टू पीपल्स टीवी इंग्लिश एवरीवन माय सेल्फ आर्किटेक्ट पीयूष पंत सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल लाइक एंड शेयर द वीडियोस एंड हेल्प अस इन स्प्रेडिंग द फ्री नॉलेज इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग अबाउट द बेसिक और एलिमेंट्री प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ आर्चेस ऑन व्हिच दे वर्क एंड आल्सो वी विल नो अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ आर्चेस यूज्ड इन द वर्ल्ड फ्रॉम पास्ट टिल प्रेजेंट वी विल आल्सो लर्न अबाउट द कंस्ट्रक्शन मेथड्स एंड ड्राइंग टेक्निक्स ऑफ देम So let's start with an introduction. What is an arch? In one liner, we can define it as a vertical curved structure that spans an elevated space and it may or may not support the weight above it. Arches are also used as a horizontal member in structures like an arch dam. Here it is used to hold the hydrostatic pressure against it. Here are a few examples of arch dam already existing in the world. First one is the Katse dam. It is a 185 meter high concrete arch dam in Lesotho. It is the Africa's second largest double curvature arch dam. Another is the Nguri dam. It is a hydroelectric dam on the Nguri River in Georgia. Currently it is the world's second highest concrete arch dam with a height of 271.5 meters that is 891 feet. In India, Iduki Dam is the double curvature arch dam constructed across the Periyar River in a narrow gorge between two granite hills locally known as Kuravan and Koroti in Kerala. At 168.91 meters, that is 554.2 feet, it is one of the highest arch dams in Asia. The very basic example of an vertical arch is round arch or semicircular arch. We will discuss it in detail later in this video. Let me show you some existing examples for the same. In front of you is an example of one of the largest Roman triumphal arch known as Arc of Constantine. This arch spans the way taken by the emperors when they entered the city in triumph or victory in a war. It was erected by the Roman Senate to pay respect to Constantine's first victory in a battle. Arches may be same as vaults in some cases, but a vault is a continuous arch forming a roof, which makes it different from an arch. Use of arches can be seen from the 2nd millennium BC in Mesopotamian brick architecture. But their systematic use started with the ancient Romans, who were the first to apply the technique to a wide range of structures like waterways, amphitheaters, etc. Now, let's know the basic principle of an arch, as how the load is transferred to the ground due to which it can span large areas. An arch is a soft compression form It can span a large area by resolving forces into compressive stresses and in turn eliminating tensile stresses. This is sometimes referred to as arch action. As the forces in the arch are carried to the ground, the arch will push outward at the base called thrust. As the rise or height of the arc decreases, the outward thrust increases. In order to maintain arch action and prevent the arch from collapsing, the thrust needs to be restrained. either with internal ties or external bracing such as abutments now let's get to know about different types of arches based on their form and the chronological order in which they were developed first one is triangular arch it is an arch often formed by two large diagonal stones that mutually support each other to span an opening it is also called a meter arch or mayan arch as it was more common in the buildings of the Maya of Yucatan. Maya engineers developed a unique structural mechanism that enabled the construction of long span interior spaces, multi-story structures and unique circular structure geometries. This structural mechanism is known as the Maya arch. This is the basic building module for all Maya structures. The structural geometry of this system utilizes a linear inverted V shape to develop clear span in interior spaces. Maya arch is also known as false arch or cobbled arch. Next is round arch or semicircular arch. This is formed in a continuous curve and was developed by the Romans. They were often used side by side in a series to create an arcade. It is constructed from a single center. Another is segmental arch. 
It is a type of arch with a circular arch of less than 180 degrees. It is sometimes also called a scheme arch. The segmental arch is one of the strongest arches because it is able to resist thirst. To prevent failure, a segmental arch must have a rise that is equal to at least one eighth the width of the span. Segmental arches with a rise that is less than one eighth of the span width must have a permanent support or frame beneath the arch to prevent failure. In front of you is an example of Roman segmental arch bridge Aosta Valley in Italy. It is from 1st century BC. The span of the bridge is 31.4 meters according to recent research. Another is first open spandrel segmental arch bridge, the NG bridge over the Zhao river in Hebei province in China, which was built in 610 AD. Another type of arch is unequal round arch or rampant round arch. The rampant arch as it is known in French is an arch in which the starting point of the arch are not at the same height or we can say an arch whose support is higher on one side than on the other. They seem to be found in side aisles to support the arcade walls. Sometimes these rampant arch seems to be accidental or later additions. They usually function as internal buttresses similar to flying buttresses that appeared later in Gothic architecture. Now let's get to know how to draw the rampant arch and find the center of it. First draw a line AB from the lower support and then draw a line BC which joins the higher and lower support of the arch. Then draw a line DF from the center of the line AB cutting the line BC at E. Then draw a line FG perpendicular to line BC. After that extend the line FG to the point H on line AB. Now with the point H we can draw the arch BF from the lower support of the span. Now draw a line CI from the higher support of the arch which cuts the line FG at I. Now with the help of point I we can draw another arch from the higher support and can complete the rampant arch. Another type of arch based on form is lancet arch. Lancet means a small broad two edged surgical knife or blade with a sharp point. Therefore lancet arch is narrow and pointed like the head of a spear. It was developed during the gothic period. It was often used for windows and roof structures in churches and cathedrals. The arch has a narrow and a pointed apex. Now let's get to know how to construct or draw a lancet arch. First of all divide the springing line of the span into equal parts. Let's say if the span is 8 feet then we can divide it into 4 equal parts of 2 feet. Now extend the line on both ends of the springing line of 2 feet. After that draw an arch of the right side using the extended line as a center of left side. And similarly draw an arch of the left side using the extended line as a center of the right side. Another type of arch is equilateral pointed arch. It is a two centered arch in which the chords of the curves are equal to the span of the arch. Now let's get to know how to construct the equilateral pointed arch. It is different from the lancet arch as the centers of the arch start from the point the arch starts. To make the right side arch we take the center point from which we will start the left side arch and vice versa. You can see our equilateral arch is complete and the chords of the arch are equal to the span of the arch. This is the big difference between the lancet arch and equilateral arch. Next type of arch is flat arch or jack arch. A jack arch is a structural element in masonry construction that provides supports at openings in the masonry. Alternate names are flat arch and straight arch. Unlike regular arches, jack arches are not semicircular in form. 
Instead, they are flat in profile and are used under the same circumstances as lintels. To draw a flat arch in the sheet, start with making a center line of the span of the arch you are going to make. After that, from the top edge of the arch span, take an angle of 60 degrees which will act as a skew back for laying the bricks. Now draw a reference line by extending the skew back angle of 60 degrees. Extend the line in such a way so that it hits the center line as shown. Similarly, extend the reference line from the other side of the arch. Both the lines intersecting at center line will make an angle of 60 degrees, which is same as your skew back angle. You can change the skew back angle depending on the height and span of your arch. Now, by using the same point of intersection of two lines, you can create a layout of the arrangement of the bricks on the flat arch. Next is Trefoil Arch. A trefoil is commonly thought of as a symbol of three intersecting circles such as the biohazard symbol. The trefoil arch took the imagery of the trefoil and adapted it to an arch. Many arches and portals use these rings as an ornamentation of gothic structures. The trefoil arch of New York Central Park, completed in 1862, is an excellent example of the trefoil being applied to a bridge. However, the form of these arches are not structurally efficient and are mainly used for ornamental purposes. Now let us see how to construct a trefoil arch. From the springing line, we decide the height of the arch according to the span. At the midpoint of the rise of arch, we have our first center of the circle. The diameter of the circle will be half of the span. After we are done with the first circle, we draw other two circles with the center on the springing line with the same diameter. These two circles intersect at the midpoint of the span. Now, when we remove the intersection of the circle, we get the trefoil shape of our arch inside. After that, we draw an outer semicircle having center at the midpoint of the span on springing line. In this way, we complete our trefoil arch. Another type of arch is horseshoe arch also called the Moorish arch and the keyhole arch. It is the emblematic arch of Moorish architecture. Horseshoe arches can take rounded, pointed or lobed form. Horseshoe arches first appeared in Indo-Islamic architecture in 1311 in the Alai Darwaza gatehouse at the Qutub complex in Delhi, though they were not a consistent feature in India. Now let us understand how we construct a horseshoe arch. It is an arch having an interdose that widens above the springing line before narrowing to a rounded or pointed crown. First we decide the span and springing line of the arch. Then we mark the center line of it. Now we place the center for the arch which will lie on the center line itself and the distance of the center from the springing line will be equal to 1 by 4th of the span. Now our center line is marked, we will move forward towards the radius of the inner circle. The radius of inner circle will be equal to the half of the span. Therefore, by taking that distance, we make the inner circle and end it on the springing line. Now depending on the thickness of the arch, Radius of the outer circle can be determined and we can get our outer ring of the arch. Now we place other bricks or stone of the arch. At the end of the arch, to give it a rest, we create a skew back for it with brick or stone. The skew back will come out a little to provide extra support to the arch. And this is how we complete a horseshoe arch. Another unique arch is three-centered arch. A three-centered arch, sometimes called a basket handle arch, closely resembles an ellipse, which puts it in a field of its own. This depressed type of arch, like the segmental and drop arch, 
can be used when the design requires the rise or height of the arch to be reduced. Three-centered or elliptically shaped arches are more commonly found in traditional homes based on colonial styles. However, their use depends more upon the skill of the architects and finished carpenters. Now let us see how to construct three-center arch geometrically. First we will mark the spring line of the arch, having a suitable span. Then we will divide the span into four equal parts. Let us mark the center line now. After center line, we will mark three centers on the springing line, namely C1, C2 and C3. Now taking C1 as center and R1 as radius, we draw one circle which is intersecting at the midpoint of the span. This circle is just a reference to get the required quadrant which we want for our arch. Therefore, we will draw this circle in light lines or dotted lines. Now we will draw an arch again starting from the springing line with the same center as C1 and darken it at this time. Similarly, we take center C3 and same radius as before we draw another circle in dotted lines intersecting at the midpoint of the span as well. And as we did in previous circle, we will draw another arc taking C3 as center and darken it. Now taking the distance between the centers C1 and C3 and taking C3 as center, we draw an arc intersecting with the center line of the arch. Similarly, taking center as C1 and same distance as previous, we mark another arc intersecting with the previous arc and the center line. In this way, we get our third center that is C4. Now, taking C4 as a center and the radius will be equal to the distance between C1 and C3 plus the radius of circle with center C1 or C3. Joining these two distance, we get the radius for our third circle having the center as C4. Now, we will draw a circle with center as C4 in dotted lines. In the same circle, let us darken the arc which is intersecting with the previous two circles we made. Now when we remove all our construction lines one by one, we can see how our arch is completed with the help of three center that is C1, C2 and C4. Center C1 and C3 gives us smaller arc and center C4 gives us the final and the third arc which together completes our three centered arch. Another important arch is 4 centered arch. This arch is an advancement of 3 center arch. The rise of these arches are usually low. In addition, it can cover more span than a 3 centered arch with less increase in the rise. It has a pointed apex which is different from the 3 centered arch which has a rounded apex. Two of the most notable types are known as the Persian arch which is moderately depressed and the Tudor arch which is much flatter. This type of arch uses space efficiently and decoratively. It is also employed as a wall decoration in which arcade and window openings form part of the completely decorative surface. Now let us get to know how to geometrically construct the four center arch. To find the four centers, there are many possibilities that can be used to get the desired arch. To explain you, I will be using a most common method which gives a typical and most commonly used four centered arch. The process of geometrical construction is similar with three centered arch we did earlier, only with few additions are done to find the third and the fourth center. Starting with dividing the span into four equal parts. After that, we mark the center C1 on the springing line and taking the center distance as R1 and center C1, we make an arc as shown. Similarly, we mark the second circle as C2 and taking the same radius distance R1 as before, we make another arc. Now taking the distance between the centers C1 and C2, let's say R2. We make an arc from the center C2 of same radius distance R2. 
In the same way taking C1 as center we make another arc of same radius distance R2. After that we will drop down the reference lines from center C1 and C2. Now we will make another reference line joining the center point C2 and intersection of two arc we made and extending it to intersect with the vertical line we drop from the center point C1. This will give us our third center name as C3. In the similar way we make another reference line joining the center point C1 and the intersection of arc and extending it again to intersect with the vertical line we drop from the center point C2. This will give us our fourth center named as C4. Now as we got our third and fourth center as well, we are ready to complete our arch. Taking C4 as center and radius distance R3, we can make another arc at the top ending at the midpoint of the span. And in the same way taking C3 as center and radius distance same as R3, we make another arc to close our four center arch. When we remove all our construction lines, we can see how the shape of our four center arch is coming. In this way, we complete our four center arch. Another interesting arch is parabolic arch. It is complex and simple arch all at the same time. It was developed fairly recently and is used around the world. Such arches are used in bridges, cathedrals and elsewhere in architecture and engineering. Now let's get to know how to draw a parabolic arch. First few steps are same as lancet arch or pointed arch we made before in this video. In this case we will divide the span into 7 equal parts and mark them on the springing line. More parts you will divide the span into, more fine and elongated arch you will get. There are many geometrical ways to create a parabolic arch. This is the most easy and commonly used. On the left side of the arch, let's extend the same length which we got from dividing the span equally and mark on the springing line. That will give us our first center as C1. Similarly, we repeat the same process on the right hand side of the arch which will give us our second center as C2. Now taking center as C1, and radius equal to the span plus the extended length as shown here, we make an arc starting from the springing line on the right hand side. In the same way, we take C2 as center this time and radius same as previous. We make another arc which intersect with the previous arc we made. You can see we got the profile of a pointed arch or lancet arch here. To get a parabolic arch, we need to add few more steps into it. Now let's draw a circle having diameter equal to the span of the arch. After that, we draw a center line of the arch starting from the midpoint of the span and intersecting the circle. The intersection of the circle and the center line will give us our third center point as C3. We got our center but we need to find the radius for that to draw another circle which will give us the top part of the parabola also known as apex. So to do that, join the starting point of the arch with the center C3 and extend it further so that it intersect with the arc on left side. In the same way, repeat the process on other side of the arch. This extended portion coming out of C3 and intersecting the arc will give us the radius for center C3. Now we draw a reference circle taking C3 as center and the radius as R3. Now to get the top part of the parabolic arch, we darken the top portion of the circle which is intersecting with the arcs we made earlier. In here we can see the profile of the parabolic arch coming up. In the same way we can draw the offset to it and this way we can do the geometrical construction of parabolic arch.